Let's see what happens. I feel like giving myself a guided meditation and inviting those of you who want to come along for the ride. <laughs> like I said, I want to be entertaining. I don't want to repeat myself. But something wiser in me knows repetition. Certain conventions have their use. And so, like both Catherine and I have started most guided meditations, just surveying the base of your body, have you landed? You can even play with the breath. Forget about the in-breath for now and just focus on the out-breath. Letting each out-breath be a downward movement. Starting somewhere. Feels like it's that's what's happening. I'm moving down through the trunk. It's like water if you like. Moving through your legs and into the ground. Giving all the weight away to the ground. Not holding any breath back. The fuller I give, the fuller I can receive. There's no need to hold anything back. All of the outbreath can return to the earth. Really notice the contact between your body and what's underneath. Hmm. Kind of the quality of relief, a sigh. Oh. Some of you, maybe many of you, will have habits of willfulness, using willpower as the main motivator, vehicle in life. If you do, chances are that you may sit a bit too rigidly, forcing the body upright. Mm. And then a bit of Relaxing in the out-breath can help. Maybe I can relax a little bit in the upper body. Don't have to sit like a Zen warrior. What tends to happen is as awareness fills up the body more, it finds its own balance. But rather than doing it from the outside with commands, you do it from the inside with sensitivity, care. There's mutuality and respect in that. I get this image appearing spontaneously. You know these Japanese soldiers that stayed on their little Pacific island and protected it and 
gathered arms, gathered provisions, looking for Allied bombers in the air. Years, decades after the war was over, my body can feel a bit like that, a bit tense, a bit rigid, a bit willful. The war is over. Hoist the white flag. Join the human family. You don't have to will your way through life. Feels like I'm tuning into the body on its own terms when I do that. It grows more willing and trusting to speak to me. And now I feel ready to include the in-breath. I like to experience that like a rising through the body. Letting the body draw something in from below, from the earth. And the body can have as much as it wants. There's a quality of brightening in the in-breath. Receiving. Expansion. And don't worry if you find yourself manipulating the breath a lot. Awareness is just as happy with a manipulated breath as a free one. And just really let the breath run through your trunk, your legs. Gently awakening everything. And of course there is no one way to experience breathing. You may have your own ways.
and strange as it may seem. This is what the Buddha was doing under the Bodhi tree at the night of his awakening. Awareness of breathing. And in the tradition that I belong to as a monk, the word Buddha has come to mean the one who knows. And I don't know so much about most religions, but I notice that there seems to be a reference to this quality. Many, perhaps all, religious traditions. Krishna consciousness. A silent witness. I don't know the Christian term, but I have no doubts there is one. It's almost like leaning back into awareness itself. And here things get a little hazy perhaps. And I will allow myself some poetic license. But there is something available to us that knows. I hesitate to say moment by moment because sounds like there's little separate moments. But there really is only one, isn't there? It's always now. Everything else is thinking. You get a sense for something that's so silent and so alive. It's so close to home. Is there something that's closer than your thoughts? Closer than breathing. It feels so intimate. And yet to me at least, not necessarily personal. It seems to be before the person I take myself to be. Rather than that coming and going in me, it seems like I come and go in that. I arise, I pass in that. I can never own that. But I can learn to trust it.
This is what Buddha images, Kuan Yin images, remind me of. This is what I bow to. I need the reminders. My historical personality has little interest in this. It wants to be happy all the time. Hasn't worked out that great for me. An awareness itself, this knowing, this silent witness, is totally at ease. It really doesn't mind the content of awareness. It really does not have preferences. When Edmund Hillary was asked why he climbed Mount Everest, he replied, because it's there. I imagine if I was to ask awareness, why are you aware of something? Because it's there. This is not bleak. Observation. Awareness has vibrancy. It's where aliveness comes from. emotional quality, sometimes it seems to me like serenity. It's just a word I'm suggesting. In some ways it feels like, like being, being without further complications. I am In the Old Testament we find a wonderful meditation object. I am that I am. Awareness feels like I am, that's what I am. Be still and know, I am that. Awareness belongs to no religion, to no culture. It's always been there.
and to live in a time and place where pointers, reminders to it are available is a blessing. It's a meeting place of total equality. It's not like my awareness is better or worse than anybody else's. As long as there is some reference to this quality of knowing, human interactions are so much easier. We tend to see what holds us together rather than what separates us. And so there's a lot of big big ideas I'm presenting but I am assuming that in some way you're with that quality of awareness it's there when I'm happy it's there when I'm sad It's there when I'm confused. It's there when I'm clear. Sometimes I think of it as an inner friend. It's always on my side unwaveringly, unshakably. It will never let me down. It will never lead me astray. You hear a a ringing tone inside your head, inside your body. Ajahn Sumedho, one of the teachers in the tradition I was in, that's his main meditation object, calls it the sound of silence, a high-pitched sound seems to come from inside. (coughs) It can be an entryway to awareness. What does awareness sound like, if you wish? When we hear that sound, there's a degree of availability, presence in us. So in that way, it's a useful object. And 
Notice what it feels like to be you when awareness is available, present, noticed. Notice the quality of uncertainty. Who knows what the next thought, emotion might be. The ideas I may have of what I am, what my life is like. Strengths, weaknesses, challenges, problems. doesn't seem quite so convincing anymore. Not dismissing it. Just holding it a bit looser. I was so happy this morning. For the first time this retreat I felt really happy. Sunshine, porridge, gentle humans and bunnies in the garden. And just a small voice, I want this to last, please last. By lunchtime I was feeling not so good, a bit flat. I laid on my bed and something just said, aren't you tired, happy, not so happy, feeling good, not feeling good, the endless elevator of the heart. Do you really want to put all your chips on that? Aren't you very well aware there's another refuge? There is a harbor. There is an island. There is a safe place. And it's always waiting for me. Will I turn to it? Or move through my usual habits of personality and karma? The Buddha said some wonderful things about this quality of awareness. Ajahn Chah repeated one of them in a letter to Ajahn Sumedho. Not leaning forward, not leaning backwards, not standing still, This is your place of non-abiding. This is your refuge. (laughs) 
my thinking mind gets a hold of that, goes all funny. That something in me understands what it's pointing towards. There's courage here, there's dignity here, there's a way of moving towards feeling much bigger, more willing, less need to hide, less need to shirk away from the difficult bits of life. something that's continuously available to you and me is perfectly happy and available to handle all that moves through our lives all of it I grew up with the Moomin Trolls, a family of fat, happy, white trolls. And Father Moomin is looking out the window of the little house in the Finnish archipelago, sees a storm coming in. And so he says, Hey, kids. Let's take the rowing boat out for a trip on the sea. A storm is coming up. I like the image. All these difficulties ahead. Let's get in there. Let's see what happens. That's what awareness does. And if anyone, for any one of you, it's not totally clear, of course, awareness is resonant. The Tibetans describe it with three main qualities clarity, space, compassion. 
Compassion means feeling with what moves through awareness. Awareness quivers with, feels with. Awareness does not feel compelled to fix the world and everything. Awareness responds appropriately, happily. So in a minute or two the bell will ring and to myself and to you all I try to point at this, remind us of this. In daily life there are perhaps not so many signals, reminders of this for most of us. So look around in your your inner space, whatever it feels like, and see if you can almost like remind yourself, take note, I like this place. I'd like to come back here. Or even better, I'd like to take it along. Mm. Make it personal. What's alive in this for you? What carries meaning? What resonates? Take that with you. Hold it close. (laughs) 